Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video uh, where we're taking a look at the Korg Op 6. Today, we are going to be diving into one of my favorite features on the Op 6, uh, which is the user algorithms. So in this video, we're going to describe what the user algorithm feature on the Op 6 actually is. We'll take a look around the menu system, uh, which allows us to interact with it. And then we're going to take a look at how this feature, along with the operator modes, allows us to define entire synth architectures inside the Op6. And in doing so, we're going to build uh, a Juno style synth that lives entirely within the Op6. So before we can talk about the user algorithm, uh, let's just have a quick recap on what an algorithm is in the context of the Op6 and FM synths in general. Um, if we're on the algorithm homepage here, we can select the algorithm by turning this knob here and we can see these little boxes are moving around and shifting around. So um, here's, that's algorithm uh, five there. Um, what the algorithm defines is how the operators are joined together. So in algorithm five, we have uh, three operators, one, three and five, uh, which are at the bottom of the algorithm, which tells us that these are the ones that we're hearing. Uh, operator two feeds into operator one and will, if it's operating in, in FM mode, it will uh, frequency modulate operator one, four is feeding into three, and six is feeding into five. And all the different algorithms that are available to us change that relationship. So for example, on uh, algorithm 18, uh, uh, operator one is our only thing that we're hearing on our output, and that's been fed into by operator two, operator three, and operator four. And then operator four has been fed in to by operator five, and five has been fed into by operator six. Now, if this was just an FM synth, of course, this is just talking about frequency modulation, but as we've seen in uh, the previous three videos that I've done on the op six, uh, we can actually uh, use operators not only to um, do modulation of parameters, but also to process the signal that's coming in from above it in the algorithm. So in order to make use of the user algorithm, we turn the algorithm knob all the way to the end uh, where it says user. Our normal boxes disappear and we're left with this kind of dot matrix here. And uh, if this is an initialized patch, which this is, this is going to leave us with uh, no sound coming out basically. Uh, and that's because currently none of the operators are set to do anything. Uh, all of the lights are off, you'll, you'll notice there. Uh, so in order to actually set up our user algorithm, we want to come into the miscellaneous menu here and come down to where it says user algorithm and then it says press yes to edit user algorithm. We say yes and now we're into the editing of our uh, user algorithm. Now this um, setup here, this menu has two different pages. Uh, and actually, the first page that you want to go to probably is the second page. So uh, if we go to the second page, what this allows us to do is set which of our operators we actually hear, uh, which is functionally the same, if we come back to my hastily drawn diagram, as deciding which of our operators are sat at the bottom of our algorithm. So if we just want to hear operator 1 coming out, we can turn operator 1 on, it turns red so we can hear it, and now if we actually turn it up, we can actually hear it. None of these other operators are going to do anything because they're neither uh, set to be um, an output nor are they set to do anything. Now if we come into the first page again, uh, this is where we are able to select our operators and decide what is feeding into them. So I've moved this across to operator 1, you can see it's on this top line here, and now our controls say how much of each of the other operators do we want to feed in to operator one. Now this is still going to involve us turning up the uh, level control for that operator. But for example, if I want to set up the op six as a simple two operator uh, synth with op one being our carrier and op two being the modulator, what we want to do is turn up the control that says two into one. Operator two goes purple, uh, which now tells us that it's operating as a modulator. And now, We've got a simple two operator um, setup here. Now what's really interesting here is that we can also decide to say, well, actually on page two, I want to hear operator two as well as it acting as a uh, modulator. So now you can see that this has gone purple, telling us that it's both a carrier and a modulator at once. So we can hear operator two 
and also hear its effect on operator one, which incidentally allows us to set up um, algorithms that work in kind of the same way as some of the uh, interesting X, Y stuff that you get on the Digitone, for example. Um, so we can have operators which are acting both as carriers and as modulators. We can also do crazy stuff, like if we come back into this page here and select operator two, we can now say that we also want one to run into two. So now we have uh, a situation where we're hearing both these operators and they're also interacting with each other, which causes feedback. We can get all sorts of interesting digital craziness going on this is actually really interesting when we work with ring modulator modes rather than fm because it's a bit more forgiving and we can get all sorts of interesting cross modulations happening and that's basically uh, how the user algorithm uh works um, we are going to use this along with the different operator modes in order to set up an entire um, juno style synth inside the up six. So let's initialize this patch and take a look. So before we try and uh, create a Juno inside the up six, we probably need to talk about uh, what the Juno synth architecture kind of looks like. So I have another hastily drawn uh, piece of paper here. And this is more or less uh, a Juno synth with some caveats, but let's just discuss what's going on here. Uh, and then we can set about actually creating it in the up six. So uh, let's start with the um, oscillators. So um, Juno style synth typically has uh, a sawtooth and a uh, pulse wave or square wave. These uh, are tuned uh, at the same frequency because they're derived from each other. Uh, I think usually on a Juno you can choose one or the other or both. You can't really fade between them, but we'll, well, our patch will be able to fade between them. Uh, independent to those two, we also have a sub oscillator, which is obviously uh, an octave below uh, what's going on with these ones here and then we also have a noise source uh, these are all then mixed together and then passed into the filter and output now i think strictly speaking the um, high pass filter comes after the low pass filter on the Juno, but for our purposes um, we're going to put it first uh, just because it will allow us to to do something <laughs> that makes more sense so uh, all of those are mixed together they go through a high pass filter into a low pass filter and then out through the vca um, in terms of modulation, uh, we have fairly limited modulation, not that it stops it being a classic synth, I guess. Uh, we have an LFO, uh, which can be sent to the cutoff of the filter. It can be set to the pitch of our oscillators, and it can also be used to do pulse width mod modulation on the uh, square wave. We also have a single envelope, uh, which can be sent to the pitch of the oscillators. Probably won't bother with that. Um, well, we can, but um, we'll see. Um, but also it will go to the cutoff of the low pass filter and also to the amp. So um, one of the sort of defining features of um, the classic Juno synths was this sort of limited modulation sources, but with them, it sort of added to the character. One other thing I should probably mention is that uh, you can also switch the VCA to be gated rather than uh, coming off the envelope which allows you to have the filter move independently to the amp. And we can address that in our patch as well. So that's the basic architecture that we're going to try and uh, replicate. Um, we're going to stick to this um, sort of limited modulation source. As I say, I think strictly speaking, the high pass filter comes later, but for our purposes, we're going to put it earlier because it allows us to do something that makes more sense to do it that way, basically. Um, yeah, so that is what we are going to aim for. Now, um, to help guide us along the way, um, I'm going to let you know what each of our operators, what job they are going to be doing. Um, hopefully that comes up on the on the camera. Uh, but operator one is going to be acting as our sawtooth. Operator two is going to be our square. Three is going to be our sub. Uh, four is going to be our noise source. Operator five is going to be our high pass filter. So we're going to be making use of the filter modes on the operators. And operator six is going to be our low pass filter and also our amp um, output VCA, if you like. Uh, so we're going to have to think about how we are going to set that up in our um, user algorithms. So before we get going, let's make sure that we are actually on the user algorithm. There we go. All of our lights turn off. And we can come back into our menu. 
So the first thing we want to do is define which of our operators we're actually going to hear, which ones are going to have that direct out. So we can come across to uh, the second page here where we can turn the uh, outputs on and off. If we come back to our diagram, um, obviously the only thing we're going to really hear is the VCA. So uh, that's operator six. So we can turn that one on. That's going to be our output. In terms of what feeds into everything, uh, it's probably easier to work backwards. So um, operator six is our filter and our amp. So that's those first two uh, bits uh, sorted out there. Uh, the high pass filter then um, flows into the low pass filter. Um, so high pass filter is operator five. So if we come down to operator six here, we can say that we want five to flow into six, so we can turn that all the way up. Uh, in terms of the rest of the uh, architecture, um, really we're talking about our other four operators, our source, square, sub, and noise, all flowing into the high pass filter. So we can select uh, operator five, which is our high pass filter, and we can say that we want one to go into five, we want two to go into five, three to go into five, and four to go into five. And in terms of setting up our user algorithm, that is basically it. So pretty straightforward actually to replicate this architecture from the algorithm perspective. Now we need to set up the various different modes on all of our operators. Okay, so let's go into the mode screen. It probably makes sense to work backwards here as well. So operator six, that's going to be our low pass filter and our amp. So the mode that we're going to want to select for this is filter. We are going to want to turn off the oscillator mix because we don't want to hear any of the oscillator that this operator is creating. Uh, and the other thing we're going to want to do is come into the pitch screen and set it to fixed, which is going to allow us to control the cutoff frequency of that filter by adjusting the pitch of the operator. Obviously, we won't hear anything yet because nothing's been sent through it, um, but we will be able to check that in just a second. Uh, in terms of what... Um, filter mode we're going to use. This is going to be a low pass filter, but I have been playing around and I think that the 24 bit, sorry, 24, 24 bits, uh, 24 uh, decibels per octave MG filter sounds pretty good uh, in this setup. It might not be totally um, authentic, but that's the one that just seems to sound nice. Operator five is a high pass filter. So we also want that on filter mode and we'll just set that to high pass filter. But they also we have got the modeled ones I think the high pass filter is 6 dB per octave on the um, on the Juno. Might be wrong there. Um, let's just leave it on the basic high pass filter. And again, we want to turn the oscillator mix all the way down. We don't want to hear the oscillator that's actually coming from that operator. So in terms of our uh, four sort of um, oscillator operators, so we'll come up to one first. We can leave these on FM mode. In FM mode, they're just going to, if nothing's modulating them, which is not, they're just going to act as oscillators. But the um, additional benefit that the FM mode has is that we have the width control, which is going to allow us to do the pulse width modulation on our square waves. So uh, in terms of choosing the um, different uh, wave shapes, if we turn these two up for a minute, uh, we'll be able to actually uh, here, stuff. Hopefully, just that one at the moment. Cool. Yeah. So we can prove that stuff's running through here. We'll check the filters in just a second. Uh, we're going to set this to um, saw. I've tried both saw and saw HD. Saw HD initially sounds better, but then when you have it in the context of the of the patch, I think the basic saw sounds better. So now we're able to just check that our filters are working. Um, so um, that should be our low pass. Sounds good. Oh, I've forgotten on my high pass filter to set that to fixed. Make sure we do that. Great, there is our high pass filter and our low pass filter. Use them together to get a band pass filter. Lovely, okay, so that is proving that the signal is flowing the way it should go. Uh, so let's carry on with our other uh, operators. So for our square operator on operator two, 
Uh, I'm going to use the standard square. Um, the square HD. You can't hear that much difference the way they're tuned at the moment, um, but I'll show you on Operator 3. The square HD has a better low end to it, but it doesn't seem to... The, the pulse width modulation doesn't seem to sound quite as authentic with it. I don't know why. Uh, so for the one where I'm going to actually do pulse width modulation, we'll, we'll have it on the basic square. And now we have our two basic waveforms being able to be mixed together there. As I say, on an actual Juno, I think you can only turn them on or off, but here we can actually fade between them. So our sub, we can bring that one up. That's operator three. As I said, we're going to use square HD for this one, and we're going to drop its ratio down to set an octave down. So if we compare that to... There's not a whole lot of difference. It just seems that the, um, the HD just has a little bit more bottom end. Like it's marginal. But in my testing, I just felt that that kind of sounded a little bit better. So now we have. Our basic waveforms and we can mix them together like that. And they're all running together through our filters. Uh, the final one here is going to be our noise. So operator four. We'll set the waveform to uh, noise and white. Now, what I found when I was playing around with this is that I felt that the white noise is just a little bit too pure sounding, a little bit too bright. Um, even with, uh, obviously the filter's open, so it would be bright, but I just found it was a little bit too much, really. Um, so what I've um, done previously when I've been playing around is I've actually set this to a filter as well turn the oscillator mix all the way up, um, set it to fixed, and just adjusted the um, pitch. So it's just not like pure white noise, it's a little bit ta tapered off. I just felt that it blended better with the oscillators. And I, your, your mileage may vary, but that's, kind of what I ended up with. So uh, now we have our basic setup. We have our uh, oscillators running through a high pass filter and a low pass filter. Now we need to um, set up how the sort of uh, modulation all works. Now, the one thing that isn't really working um, as it should do, I guess, uh, in terms of our set up here is that strictly speaking all of these first five uh, oscillators should be wide open in terms of the, their level at all times and everything really is only being uh, shaped in terms of its volume by this final operator now there's no way for us to have always on uh, operators unfortunately not currently in this firmware version anyway but we can get as close as we possibly can and um, the way that we'll do that if we come up to operator one is we are going to set the sustain up to full the attack down uh, to zero so these come on as soon as you press a key and then we'll set our release as long as it will go which is 90 seconds which is pretty long and then we will set its curve to linear which means that it has um, the gentlest journey down um, as you start to hit that release stage. Now, this is still going to interact a little bit with the um, the amp envelope, um, but we can uh, adjust the curve on the amp envelope so that we're still getting uh, a good sounding curve, even with this these other operators fading out as they go. This is going to kind of add up to be kind of like an exponential thing, sort of. Um, but this is basically the, the hack that we have to do in order to pretend that all of these are always wide open. So we'll replicate this across each of these other operators. So um, all the way over to linear and longest release possible. Sustain all the way up, linear, longest release possible. Same thing on four. And same thing on 
five. That means that we have level control over all of those operators uh, in operator six. So um, if we come back to the hastily drawn uh, drawing here, um, it is important to note that we have a single envelope which is controlling the low pass filter and the VCA at the same time. So uh, what that means is that we can't really make use of operator six's level envelope because that's not going to also control the filter. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to turn operator six all the way down so that it's um, envelope doesn't really come into play. Uh, and instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into uh, mod first. And I'm going to say that EG1 is going to be the one envelope for this patch. So uh, um, we'll leave it set as it is uh, currently. That's fine. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come into the V patch and we are going to patch that envelope into the level of op six and also the pitch of op six. Um, as I described in uh, my video when we were looking at the operator modes, the pitch of a filter operator, which operator six is, is also its cutoff. So that's going to allow us to do cutoff and level at the same time. So let's uh, do our level first. So our source is going to be EG1. Our destination is going to be op sixes level. And now hopefully when I play a note, we're going to hear nothing uh, because, <laughs> sorry, mind fart, uh, because, uh, because we haven't turned the intensity up, of course. <laughs> a terrible moment of, of uh, confusion there. So now that we have our, uh, our envelope um, intensity turned all the way up, we can hear uh, that working. Now, during testing, what I found was for some reason, having it set to 100% made the release portion of the envelope feel like it came in late, like it's pushing it past 100%. So I found that setting it somewhere around 80 actually led to having a more um, realistic envelope. So that means this patch has now got a little quieter, but we can um, compensate for that if we come into the miscellaneous menu. And on program miscellaneous, we can just turn the, the volume up of the whole patch. And uh, we still get what feels like the full amount. So that's good. So now we have uh, that first envelope processing the level of operator six. Uh, come back into the V patch and we can do exactly the same thing. EG1, this time go into op six's pitch. Uh, set the intensity. Hear that it's getting brighter now, but if we turn down the cutoff, you can hear that. It's now opening up our filter, and we can set different combinations of our various uh, operators. Trim off some of the bottom end there. And we've starting to get this basic architecture set up and behaving like it should. So let's check that that's all working uh, properly. So if we come back into the mod menu, uh, if we turn up our attack, we should get a womp happening in there. Sounds good. Give it some sustain. We can play sustained notes, give it some release. Uh, hearing the release so much at the moment, it's interesting. Why would that be? Have I missed somewhere uh, on one of these other ones with the level? Uh, yeah, so we need to still crank the level, the release on that one as well then. Okay, um, yes, 
that's that is a good point. We should also have done our um, trick on operator six as well. Uh, so we also want to have the sustain up full there. Yeah. Sorry, I knew I missed something. So now we should be able to. Great. Control the level and filter in its entirety. And we might want to set this not to linear. Sounds a little sort of fake at the moment. Sort of classic Juno piano sound. Now, of course, if we wanted to um, give this some um, uh, resonance, we want to come into operator sixes mode and we can turn up the resonance here. Take out some of the bottom end. Uh, what we might also want to do on operator uh, five is give it just a tiny bit of resonance as well. Not much, but just so that's boosting around it. That allows us to do that Juno low end boost with the high pass filter then. That's probably a bit too much resonance. Yes, there's that boost point. Cool. So uh, that's our envelope working as it should do. Uh, now, one thing I mentioned with the uh, architecture here is that um, there is a way on the Junos to basically set the envelope to be a gate instead so that we can have um, filter movement that's independent of the VCA. Uh, so the probably the easiest way to do that is just to come down to our next envelope here and just set it to be a gate. So not release all the way off, just so it has a little bit of a, a movement there. And then when we want to have that behavior, we can come into our V patch here, uh, which the one that's going to our level here, and we can set the source to two instead. That's going to gate instead, which means that we are able to do things like uh, have that filter sweep happening at the start of the note without it also having a volume fade in so you hear more of the filter great okay so let's uh get on to the lfos then so like with our uh, envelopes uh we only need one LFO, which can be patched to various different places. So that LFO will use LFO1, and we will um, then send it to places uh, using the V patch. Um, so if we just come down to our LFO1 here, we've got it set um, with, its, with its speed. The key sync is set to common, which means that it, um, if there are no uh, notes playing, you press the first note and the LFO starts, and then any notes that you play within the chord um, don't restart the LFO, um, as opposed to voice key sync, where every time you press a key, it gets its own LFO starting at the beginning phase. I think, strictly speaking, the mode that we want um, in order to replicate the Juno's functionality is off. So there's an LFO that's um, just running constantly in the background. I think it's a single LFO on on the Junos that uh, rather than an LFO per, per voice, I'm willing to be told otherwise, but for this patch, we're going to work under that assumption. So um, in terms of um, patching this to our various different uh, places, we can come into our V patch again and uh, come into an empty slot. So the first place we probably want to send this is going to be to the pitch of the um, of the oscillators. Now there's two 
different ways that we can approach this. There's actually two different ways we can patch this in. Uh, the first is we can do it through the V patch, which is how I'm going to do it because I want all of my controls within the V patch. But for um, the sake of completeness, the other place that we can get it is in the miscellaneous menu here. Uh, if we go to the program pitch, we can set how much of LFO1 has been sent uh, to pitch here. But we're going to do it in uh, the V patch instead. So in our empty slot here, our source is going to be set to LFO1. Our destination is going to be program pitch. Uh, and there is our pitch vibrato for all to see. Um, let me just uh, make sure, let's set that back to EG1. Cool. And that should be nicely blending on all of the different um, operators there. So um, let's go ahead and set this up to be controllable by the modulation wheel as well, because we don't want this on all the time, but we probably do want access to it at all times. So um, all we need to do in order to do this is uh, underneath the intensity, we've got this control parameter here and we just set it to the mod wheel. And that means that the amount goes via the mod wheel. I love the way the modulation works on the OPSX. Um, so that's that done, that's easy enough. The uh, next destination uh, for our LFO, if we come back here, uh, it's probably going to be the pulse width modulation for the square wave. Square wave is operator two. So um, empty slot source is going to be uh, the LFO one. The destination is going to be op two, and we're going to come across to where it says FM width. Let's listen to that one. Just change our. It's better. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, operator two FM width, and if we up this, now it sounds a little bit weird, and I think the reason for that is that because the um, LFO is bipolar, but the width control doesn't go negative. Um, it sounds a bit strange. So probably the easiest way to fix this um, is to come back to operator two's mode here and start with its width at 50%, which makes this a skinny square wave by default. We can adjust that if we want to, but. Now we have our pulse width modulation, uh, more or less. And if, if we like, if we come back into the V patch here, we can also send that through the mod wheel. If we like. Uh, okay, so that is that set. If we don't want it going via the mod wheel, we just turn this control off and then we just have a control within the V patch. Uh, but I'll have it go through the mod wheel, I think. Uh, the final place that our LFO can be sent is going to be to the cutoff of the low pass filter, or in terms of our purposes with the um, filter mode on OP6, um, that's going to be uh, the pitch of OP6. So free slot here, source is going to be LFO one again, destination will be op six pitch. And there's our filter wobble as well. We probably don't want that on at all times. And we probably don't want it going via the mod wheel, but we can come and grab it inside the V patch whenever we need it. So that I think is most of our um, architecture here. We have our modulation sources going to the relevant places. We have control over the 
filter and amp. It's going quite as fast at the moment. If we want to adjust the filter depth for our um, envelope, uh, we can do it in the V patch on that second slot there. We just lower the intensity. It jumps a fair bit, but you can hold down shift to do it more granularly if you need to. And then this sets our starting cutoff. So in terms of finessing this patch a little bit, Uh, what can we do? Well, the first thing that I think might make this sound uh, a little bit uh, sweeter is if we um, implement some fake oscillator drift a little bit, just so that the oscillators um, between the voices are slightly out of tune with each other, just to create a little bit of that richness. I think that would be nice. Um, so what I'll do for that is I'll come on to LFO3. I will set it per voice, and I will set the mode to the random level and time set the speed fairly low so we don't really hear the pitch drifting but it just kind of does and then in the v patch find an empty slot easy to put this one at the end um, our source will be lfo3 destination will be program pitch so that's um, the pitch of each uh, voice essentially and just turn the intensity up a tiny bit not much probably not even that much but more than five percent somewhere around there It's just one of those little sweetening things. That can just make a little bit of difference and it's enough difference to be worth doing. Um, we can set some velocity sensitivity for stuff um, if we want to. Um, uh, the easiest way to do that would be just, um, again, if we want to set it for the uh, output level, so that's the OP6 level, uh, we can just set the um, intensity to go via velocity. Or if we want that velocity to be fixed, but we want the um, filter cut off to do that, we can do the same. Which is nice. But I guess probably the big thing that's missing uh, if we're trying to make a Juno style synth is we should add some chorus. Now, luckily, the Op6 has a uh, rather generous selection of effects. So if we come into the effects here, and would you believe chorus is the default for the first slot anyway, so we can turn up that mix. Hello. <laughs> Great. <laughs> 
Sorry, I uh, just got lost in the patch there a little bit. We could add some reverb as well. I mean, why not while we're here? Uh, let's go smooth. I remember it's our single um, envelope. That's uh, giving us all of our envelope movement. And also our single LFO as well, if you want to slow that down. Cool. So uh, there we go. I've, I, I've got a Juno now. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so the uh, user algorithms are really, really powerful because you can define these entire um, architectures within the Ops 6. Um, I will put uh, a link to this patch in the video description as well if you want to download it for your Ops 6 and have a play with it. Uh, and refine it if you like, because I'm not saying this is perfect. You might spot some things that I've missed uh, that'll be worth um, implementing. I'm going to do another video uh, looking at um, the user algorithms and how we can use it to define different synth architectures. Um, might be the next video I put up, it might be a couple of videos time, but I'm going to take a look at um, putting together a Buchler music easel inside the opsics yes uh, because we have wave folders we have fm and we have a way of redefining how all of the operators move into each other we can do it i believe in us before we go i just feel duty bound to um <laughs> to, to do an arpeggiator patch i just just seems to be a requirement let's have a, let's have a go let's do a Good stuff. Isn't synthesis fun? Let's turn down our pitch modulation amount if we're going to have it. Actually, let's just speed up our LFO again. Anyway, um, <laughs> ah, synths are good, aren't they? I do like synths. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you found it interesting or useful, then as always, if you could leave a uh, like uh, on the video um, uh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel, it would be um, a wonderful thing. Um, I should stop trying to play and talk at the same time um uh, but otherwise um as always thank you so much for joining me and until next time take care enjoy your synths and i will see you next time Take care.